Hey, welcome back to the channel. Let me show you how we built these dual axis tracking solar panel systems. I'm sure I messed up how I said that, but you guys come on, we'll go show you. The reason we installed the self-tracking solar panel system is to gain about 40% of extra power. Come on as we show you this whole trip. I'd like to take this time to thank HP Fuller and the Fast2K team for sponsoring this video. We use Fast2K to build our projects. There's a link in the description below. So this is the Eco-Worthy self-tracking solar panel kit. And this is what we're gonna be installing. Uh, our sun comes up, the say we're south is right this way. So the, the sun's gonna come up during the summer and go over like this. And then the winter, it's gonna come up and go across this big opening. So this is a really great place to put it. Um, first off, I'm pretty impressed with the build of this. This is heavy. This is not like, uh, it's gonna have to be to withstand the wind, wind loads. This is pretty heavily built. What our long-term goal is, or what our, our installation goal is, is we have a big piece of steel pipe that we're going to get a base. This has got an eight and a half inch base by eight and a half inch. We're gonna weld an eight and a half inch piece of heavy steel on the end of this a pipe and then drill the holes so it can be mounted to it. And then we're gonna take the uh, pipe and then put it in the ground four feet deep. So that's gonna, it's gonna have a four foot anchor. We're gonna be using Fast 2K to hold all this in. This should be really interesting.
lot of thought had to go into putting these solar panels in because you have to think about things like wind uplift and uh, side load as the wind blows on the solar panels. It's really hard to wrap your head around this, but uh, the Fast2K is comparable to concrete in post applications in, in just about every application. It's just, it's just super strong. It grips into the ground a little, as it expands, it pushes out into the, into the soil and then turns completely inert like little roots. We found the technical team at Fast2K to be very responsive and, and answering our questions. And I, I sent an email uh, talking about what we're going to do. And I just want to post up the email response that we got back. The tolerance to wind load is heavy depending upon the design of the structure and the foundation. Strong wind gusts will get underneath and pull the solar panels upward. The larger and higher the structure, the greater the wind force. The deeper the post is buried, the higher the uplift load it will hold. For decks, fences, and small structures, Fast2K can typically be used directly in replacement of concrete. Based upon the solar panel dimensions, post depth, and additional controls from the airspeed sensor, we don't expect any issues with wind uplift. However, for larger structures, an engineering assessment should be considered. This product is hyperphobic and will prevent the post from rusting or corroding. next part is is part B and it's got three holes here on the end I make sure those, make sure the three holes are aimed to the north it's got each it's got the it's got the which way the post is facing make sure you put the post in correctly this is the big uh, the big pin once it, once it gets through you got a Carter key these are seem to be really good quality Carter keys. They are significantly stronger than anything that I have seen in a while as far as if you're going to bend them. Which is good. Yeah, that's, a, that's impressive right there. So already the hardware is not cheap. So this is, this is the C piece and it sets here in between and it has two of the 10 millimeter pins and place those pins in and then we'll put the Carter keys in all right these pins that come with the kit are too big for this so I had to put one leg through they're oversized, so it's not going to matter, but it's just not going to, it's just something that's overlooked. It's just a little, little bitty thing, but you're going to have to 
make do with it. Same thing with that one. Yeah, so the pins that they send are too big for the pins that go through here. So there's three screws that mounts this one to this one, and it goes something along the lines of this. However, there are some holes here, and the directions do not say whether those holes go this way or this way. I am making an assumption that they go this way, but I'm not going to tighten the hardware down until I get to that point. Uh, it, it should make sense in a minute, but right now, with, with the directions the way they are, it just, I don't know. Yeah, I'm definitely going to leave this loose until I get to that point where I feel comfortable, then I'll tighten them all down. But right now, I just the directions are very vague in this area. The each individual packet, so to this point, every individual packet had only the screws for that particular job, minus these. All the pins came in one. So the next one we're going to put on is both of the E, it's E1 and E2, but again the directions are very vague and there are two mounts here that are put in and it's not, it doesn't say what, if they go up or down, but from the look of the video it looks like they go down. So I'm going to aim them down and then again I'm not going to tighten the hardware up until we get all of the actuators on. Once we start putting the actuators on it'll, it'll, it'll come together and make sense. Uh, we've got good pictures on, on the, uh, on this little directions, you can actually see, and I'm pretty sure I see these, these uh, raised bolt holes here, and they look like they are facing down. So it switches gears on you. So the, all of the directions to this point are showing that the, uh, you're looking at it from the uh, east side, and then it switches gears, and now it shows that we're looking at it from the west side. So, and then these two threaded holes will go to the west side. Again, we're not going to tighten anything up until we have got uh, a really, really good understanding. They're going to use lock nuts and use flat washers on top, flat washers on the bottom, a lock washer, and then a nut. I really believe we're in good shape because this makes sense to me. The actuator is going to mount here on these two threaded rods and it's going to mount to this one on this two threaded rods and that's going to cause it to track left and right this way. I think we're in good shape. And then the front one doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead and put it the same direction, but the actuator doesn't actually, the actuator for up and down goes to this to this. So that's what causes this to go up and down. I think we're in good shape. But we'll, we'll do them both the same just cause. To this point, all of the hardware is exceptionally good. Uh, it's nothing cheap. It's all, everything about this feels pretty daggum uh, substantial. When you take the boxes, they're pretty heavy. And again, the hardware is just, you know, you just don't see stuff with good hardware anymore. This is really good hardware. And the, the kit's not cheap and it has to be in the weather. I believe all these bolts are stainless steel. I hope you can hear me after I'm binging on this thing. So you have two actuator kits and I spent a good bit of time looking for the mounts for this in the box of, of, of the, that came with it and the actual mounts are inside the actuator box, which is probably common sense, but hey, looks like both of these are exactly the same. The picture. 
zoomed in to the point you can only see the one here and it looks like it's like this so I'm gonna make an assumption and say the other one is like this aimed, aimed at this shape again we're not going to tighten anything down until we get this uh, put together really it's very vague I'm going to have to take a chance on this one and tighten these down. The uh, reason being is because the, of where they're at, it's going to be hard to tighten them down after the actuator's in place. I'm going to put these snug, but I'm not going crazy because I don't want this to uh, strip out. So it's well made, but I think you could strip it out if you went and put the arm on it so if, if the, the there is no picture of this one so I can't really see it I'll make the assumption that the long or the taller part is towards the other part this part is angled to this part we'll get it we'll get a picture of it so in the video so you can see what I'm talking about So actually the next page does show, I called myself looking, but the next page does show both pieces and we did get it right, so that's, that's good. And the, the little electric motor aims out away from it on the actuator. So we've got two pins and two Carter keys. We'll just worry about the pins right now. This little motor aims out. Put the uh, Carter keys through, make a little bend so they can't come out. These are a little softer, a lot, lot smaller. But I'm going to bend the ends over so they don't hang me and bite me. So now we're putting the side actuator on. Even though they're front and back, this one tilts it left to right, this one tilts it up and down. So in a combination, they help each other, they help each other track. So the one that tracks left to right is much longer than the one that tracks uh, up and down. The actuator is a lot longer. I'm going to make an assumption that this turns, has, you can rotate it, I'm making that assumption. Oh, I put it in the wrong place. This goes here. So I made, a, made an assumption, really wasn't thinking it through, and I went ahead and mounted this one, this actuator on this side. And it actually goes over here. And I knew that because I, I had figured out it out earlier, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of unscrewing two screws and moving that little bracket over. I feel pretty good about tightening all the bolts down, so we'll go ahead and do that now.
It's good to tighten these down, but when you're using your impact driver, just remember these are not supported in the center. They don't have the little spacer between them, and you can crush these. So good, good and tight, but not stupid tight. So these rails have slots and you can move them in or out. And because your other rails are gonna slide up and down on these and are adjustable, it's not terribly important that you get these exactly in the right place. You want them straight. So what I'm gonna do now is I wanna make all of them. I'm gonna pull them out all the way to the end and then I'm going to make it straight. And you don't want to tighten down on these too tight because they're they could collapse this metal Just make them generally state straight there's nothing really uh, rocket science about these uh, there's a lot of flexibility in this system all right that's the first one So I slid this forward uh, as much as I could. And again, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna snug this one and then I'll straighten it out. And again, not rocket science, but I just want it to look good. There's a huge amount of flexibility in this as far as how you mount the panels. Should be no issues at all. So if you really want to know if there's some issues with this, watch the video all the way to the end and you'll know, because I'll tell you everything I messed up along the way. When we get to the end of the video, I'll kind of get a summary of anything I messed up. I used a small 12 volt motorcycle battery to move these around uh, just to make sure everything was moving and working before I went any further. It also allows you to be able to work on it. You can move it from side to side and not have to be working at such a high angle. We're installing two mounts with 12 of these Thunderbolt solar panels from Harbor Freight and we should get around 1200 watts. These are each 100 watt panels. So at this point, the solar array is pretty well constructed. Now we need to put the electronics on it. That part is still coming, but the directions at this point will become very vague. And the reason they become very vague is because it's made for multiple different types of solar panels. So each solar manufacturer or each panel manufacturer will make their panels a little bit different in sizes. So at this point, you kind of do, got to do trial and error to figure out how you're going to mount your solar panels uh, because the simple fact is every panel manufacturer makes their panels a little bit different shape size We're gonna be using these uh, uh, Thunderbolt solar panels. We got these at Harbor Freight. Uh, they're hundred watt They seem to be really good quality and we've got some really good reviews off of the internet over them So I'm, I'm excited about these
this is a nice time to have a little 12 volt battery so that you can just alternate between the positive and the negative to open and close this thing. Uh, what, what we're going to do now is we're going to level it out so it's a little bit easier to work on and be able to set the uh, cross cost ties up on top. It's got a little motorcycle battery. I don't know where, really know what it is. It's just a 12 volt battery. So that'll be a little bit easier to work with. So the way my panels are going to work, they're actually wide enough to set on these. But then you're going to hang out another set of runners going this way so that you can hang two more panels. You can make six panels on this one setup. But uh, again, you're going to have to do your own measurements. Once you get to this point, it's basically up to you and which style panels that you use. Honestly, we went through setting these bars up uh, probably at least three times because we you can mount the panels in so many different directions that it's it, you know it's just mind boggling. But it, once you get your mind wrapped around the first one, it's it starts to be pretty easy. Okay, there's two types of clamps. You have the uh, clamp that goes on the end. Uh, this just latches in like such. And that clamps down on the first panel. And then you have this clamp, which will go in between panels. So that's, that's the trick to that. So these are the, the mounts for the panels. You just put them in the track and you rotate them around and then there's a little place there for you to put a screw in and that's what the actual that's what these clamps actually clamp down to so these are completely adjustable and you can move them anywhere you need to true story right here i put all the panels on and then took all the panels back off because i found a better way of putting them on that i like better Again, this system is completely flexible to use multiple different manufacturers uh, panels. You just got to be creative and think about it. Well, just that one little bit I missed there. That's hard. That clay's hard. Whew, already out of breath. Just two shovels worth. And the bugs are... It's going to be a rough year for bugs since we didn't have no real cold weather. Are those coming through? Yeah, it's tight. Huh? It's tight. Are they coming through? No. Good. Uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna put six of them on.
Excuse me. Now, this is like a cement thing or something? This? Yeah. Yeah, this is a glue. It looks if like the ones you used to in the past. It's it is. It's very similar to plumbing, but this is kind of like outdoorsy stuff. It's very forgiving. It's made for this pipe. Mm -hmm. I need, I need to go back a little further.
But if I do, I, well, all I gotta do is just drill another hole over on this side. Or you know, I'll just have one wire, like the black wire coming out, the red wire coming out, get it sandwiched. If you want to know how to pull wire through a conduit really easy, I have a video coming out that should come out roughly a week after this video. So I think you will enjoy it and it's it really easy and it's kind of fun to watch. Writing is positive. Okay. Okay. It's a lot easier to run the cable through this. Remove remove the little fitting and run the cable through the fitting and then have the cable loop out real big so you can work with putting these wires in a little easier. And then you can pull the cable back through real easy and then screw it up that's a that's much easier the only other option would be to take this com computer control panel out but that would be a little more difficult as well so then once you get that let nut locked push this in a little bit so that the rubber casing of the wire is with that grommet and when we tighten it up it makes a watertight so it watertight or to make that waterproof so this cable goes to the long actuator. So your top, your, if you're looking at it from the right, if this is, this is the right, this is the left. The top cable is your long actuator. The uh, second one down goes to your, that's your power source. The third one down is going to your front actuator. And then the, the uh, fourth one down is the uh, the wind, the wind vane, the speed, the wind speed sensor. So we still have to put that in. But the important thing here is, it took me a little bit to figure out the understand the instructions. Is as you're looking at this, is this is the right, this is the left. The for each actuator, the positive goes to the left one. Please don't use this wiring as an example. 
either the directions are wrong or my my interpretation of them are wrong. However, later on in this video, I give you a detailed how-to. So now we'll go ahead and put the speed sensor on here in just a minute. Get on the top hole or the bottom? Top one. It might be better to put it on the bottom. No, I'm gonna go down. Yeah. So the top one. How are you? Just fine, thank you. In the mechanic shops nowadays, you have what they call parts changers. Yeah. It's not doesn't have to be super strong. <laughs> Yesterday we could have showed it working in the wind, but today there's zero wind. It's like three miles an hour. The second port is for the air sensor. There is marked on the terminal wire G into G and IN cable into the IN terminal. Okay, there's the G and there's the IN. And they are marked. So that makes it pretty easy. There's the IN. I guess that's IN, yeah. So first one's gonna be the tough life give my doggy. Again, make sure I got the right one going in the right. All right, another tug, there we go. So now we got that done. I'll pull the excess wire back through. All these are waterproof. So this bottom wire is the sensor uh, for the sun. It come pre-wired and the wire was hanging off. And then you have the next one up is this the speed sensor. The next one up is your short actuator. The next one up is the power in. Positive is going to be on your left side on all of these terminals. Again, wait a little further in the video to get the correct information. And then the top one is your long actuator. And once you, that's pretty much how it's wired. Now I got this little loop here. Maybe you can see that. The, it's got uh, three of them. The middle one is G and the top one is IN. There were some extra terminals left at the top there that I forgot to mention. But I, those are limiting switches, limiter, limiting switches, and this particular system doesn't have it. I would imagine this box works with multiple systems. Some of your actuators actually have limiters on it. Now don't don't hammer down on these. This this plastic, just a snug. I need to leave all enough for these don't move this portion stays still this portion stays still so I can put all the excess in one bundle here don't do this because the bracket mark D actually does pivot out a great deal so you need that cable to be flexible so this is the 12 volt wire that powers the system so it's a little bitty wire it's like maybe 16 gauge I don't know I got 12 gauge coming in we don't ever know, so I'm gonna rather have extra. But I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna leave about uh, 12 inches of wire out here. One of these wires has writing on it, and that is the wire that we used as positive. And this one, the wire is There's the writing, so we know this is going to be the positive. This box is, is sealed. It's got a rubber gasket that seals it, so I don't, don't really worry about the, 
the wire nuts. They're going to be in a dry environment. Be ready. Once we do our testing, we can button this box up. On these particular wires here, well, these are too long to fit in this box, so we are ordered some flexible wires that we'll, we hook these up in a little bit. I'm just going to hook that battery up for now. So we're going to take this. This is the, the negative and positive wire. We're just going to temporarily hook it up to this little battery as a test so we can test that system out. There's positive. I don't have any adapters to crimp on these temporarily, so I'm just going to split the wire, run it through the little hole. Again, theoretically, that, that one should that beeping over all right so will you aim at that little screen and zoom in on that little screen Woo. so be prepared when you turn it on that it goes through its full full range of motion for calibration and now we're going to see if it actually aims towards the sun it looks like it's gonna come back and aim towards the sun on its own and so far all only thing i've done is hooked it up correctly and provided power all right it's lost its mind and it's gonna go so it went all the way down again Maybe yeah i haven't read the directions this far yeah i think i need to read directions we can't just let it sit there and do that all day shining light in my windows yeah I know you can get a remote for this That's probably why it was going nuts, because it couldn't. So the one on the inside of the box, the two different directions kind of counteract one, each other. So right now we have our north and our east is actually on the, uh, our north and south are on the east and west axis. Axis? Axis. axis. Yeah, axis. Yeah, that word. And so we got to go into that box and return on. What I'm saying is, is when I push west it goes south when i push east it goes north I push north it goes west so we're going to have to uh really study that for a minute you know that nut yep notice here the direction of the wire coming out of this this is wrong state of the you know in i show you all the mistakes so that it makes it clear at the end we get the joy of removing all of these and doing this all over again. So that is really the all the directions you get. Connect the drive rod cable to its port. Short drive rod cable goes into third port. Red cable goes to the left terminal. So the drive or the 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 directions that come with this specifically says which port for this to go into and but if you look at the actual motherboard in here it says west east and then north south so they have definitely got the directions are wrong so uh, it's backwards so that says north north is this way then i have to reverse the wires so let's talk about the wires real quick uh the manual is very vague and in my opinion is wrong i guess there's a possibility that i read it wrong but everything that it said do is backwards um, this this wire here goes to your front actuator and this is your north south uh, actuator and for the north south to be correct on the buttons you have to put the red at the top and the black at the bottom the next one down is your power in 
Uh, and the way we've got this, the it shows on, there's actually a little diagram here, so you can't really get that one wrong. It's positive on the bottom and negative on the top. Now you go here, this is your, this is your uh, uh, east-west, east-west actuator. And to get it to be the right way, red is the bottom and black is the top. So it's, this one's actually, it's completely wrong. Every one of these is wrong. Uh, every one of these is wired in the wrong place if you do it like the direction says. So now when we put this on, I push north, it goes north. I push south, it goes south. I push east, it goes east. I push west, it goes west. So now, now it's correct. The next wire down is your little speed sensor. Um, that's right here. And that will, that is, uh, you have to wire that in. It's a really tiny little wire, so you have to get your hands in there. The next sensor down is your light sensor, this one. And this is already pre-wired, so you don't have to hook this up. That's, that's, that's good, because it's got a lot of little wires. So now I think we're ready to start our calibration and see what else is next. So this is one of the, this is the directions to install it. So this is the, the actual manual for installing it. And this is the directions for the, both of them say the same thing, but one shows you how to install the, the parts of the thing. And then this shows you how to install or to run the computer portion of it. However, it, it does give you information on where stuff goes. And this particular little manual shows to put the uh, sun sensor in the top right corner. And on the this sensor here, or this manual here says to put it on the right uh, the right panels. So there's obviously discrepancies between the two manuals. So we went ahead and used the one that goes with a little computer. All right, we're gonna turn it on for the first time with all the wires in the right place and see if it'll, what, what happens. I know it, I think it's gonna go through some sort of auto calibration. It'll go through all the way through the left and right, trying to figure out where where the limits to each of the actuators is. That information is also incorrect. This system is pretty unique in how it tracks the sun. It, it completely tracks the sun using the sun sensor. It doesn't really know exactly where it's at. Also in this point of the video, the sun sensor is in the wrong location and it's given the computer wrong information. So we, we've played with this and read directions out of both of the little manuals. And this switch is uh, a little a little off. You see where the wire comes out at the bottom? That has to be facing towards the south. So it says, mount this switch at the easternmost edge uh, north on the north, uh, north of the axis. So this is the axis right here, so this north of the axis. Ideally, in the manual, it shows the little cord hanging down like this up at the very top of the side. So what we're gonna do now is re-level it back out and then turn it off, turn it back on and let it let you see it automatically uh, set up. I'm gonna put some detailed drawings of the of of this uh, how we wired this up because it, it's the system seems to be really cool, but the directions are somewhat lacking and you have each each book says something different. If you take this bracket and mount it up there, then the switch is turned the wrong way. It literally is turned the wrong way for the sun and it'll make the, the, it'll make the unit go look towards the wrong direction. All right, so I'm gonna push set. One thing to think about too while we're doing all this is the panels are wired up. There's a positive and a negative out right here that are not hooked up. These have 80, you know, up to 85 volts in them, and they are dangerous. They're not dangerous in their current, current configuration, but just remember while you're doing wiring, especially if you have multiple systems in a row like we do, you're not going to hook up any one of these wires until you have all of your other work done. 
because if you go in there and cut a wire, there's 85 volts there, and that's enough to actually uh, hurt you, make your heart stop. That kind of hurts you. So I got the power hooked up now. It's got a little count down here. Don't stand under this, so it says three, two, one, whatever. It's counting down like five seconds. Now it's going to look for the sun. And you'll notice it fine tuning. So every few minutes, it will look to see where it's at and then it'll self adjust. Right now it's gonna get that fine tuning, but after it's fine tuned, it will just self adjust and keep self adjusting until it, uh, you know, every few minutes as the sun moves, it'll move with it. So this should get you 40% more power, 40% more, that's a lot. So this is the wind meter. And we just bought this little bracket here from Lowe's, put a piece of treated lumber on it. We still have to tidy up the wires and we'll do that. But you can go into the computer here and set what your risk level is, your risk aversion is for wind. So if you want it for 20 miles an hour at say 20 miles an hour, your, your solar panels will go back into safe mode. And what safe mode is, is they will go back completely flat so the wind is hitting the unit from the side and not causing stress on the whole unit. So, I'm not gonna tell you what to put yours on. You'll have to you know, read the directions as best you can and make a determination what your risk level is. But you can set the, the wind load. So we're testing this panel out now. We've got it set on automatic. It's actually aimed at the sun at the very, very best that it can be. And what we're gonna do now is uh, test. Now, when you're doing these kind of things, you never want to have these plugged up, especially if you don't have the other sections done. Uh, because if you plug this up, this will carry voltage down to the other part that you're working on and can shock you. So you never plug the panels in until you've actually done. Enough of safety. We're gonna go ahead and check our voltage here. So I think, let's see. This is the- Can you bring it up higher? I'm gonna move it around here. I believe this is the best voltage. This is the very best voltage that we've ever got. Uh, 61.8485, it keeps, so that's a really good voltage. Okay. Very steady, very steady. Three hundred milliamp. So yes, yeah, barely. But what I'm hoping is is that it'll keep the batteries charged up enough. Um, like overnight, it's going to charge them back up. Hey, now we're going to check and see what the voltage with the panels are flat. Then we're gonna plug the panels in together so we carry the voltage in on the inside. We'll test our voltage there to make sure that the voltage is coming through. Then we'll turn on the panels and let them adjust directly towards the sun and we'll see how much voltage we pick up from there. So right now, let's see, we are 61 volts as it sets right now. We're gonna plug these in. This is going to bring the voltage to the inside. So we got these plugged in over here already. And it's very important that you are that you don't have your panels plugged in while you're working on the other end, like you're putting the ends on the wires, because this panels put these panels are putting out 60, uh, like right now about 61 volts, and that's enough to stop your heart. So you always want to make sure that you plug this stuff up last. 
Now let's go to the inside. Okay, now we got the, all the, everything's pretty much done. Got a few little wiring issues to tidy up, but we're going to check the voltage in here now. Again, these are live, so be very careful with them. 61.66 volts, that's pretty good. Now what we're going to do now is, we're going to plug this into our Blue Eddy. Now the Blue Eddy is not permanent. We're putting a actual power wall here with a all-in-one. But the Blue Eddy is uh, kind of our, our, testing, our testing process. So we're going to plug these together. We should see it come on saying solar right here. There it went. 293, 400 volts right now. So we're at 450, 475 volts right in there. We're charging up. So we're going to discharge. We've got the AC on. We've got this little heater that pulls 1500 watts. This is a 2000 watt continuous system. Showing right now, we're pulling 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200. The elements are heating up, so this is probably going to be around a 1,300 watt. It's like that's what it's really pulling, it's about 1,300 watts. And right now, we're pulling in 491. So Tanya's going to swing around and look at the uh, the solar panels and we're going to see when we move the solar panels around directly at the sun do we pick up a lot more amperage coming in so what i have to do now is plug the solar panels in so I'll plug the solar panels into these 12 volt batteries we have set up and swing around there and we should see the panels start moving so now both the panels are moving and they're should go directly towards the sun. We may get a little shading in the evening. Looks like not. Looks like we're gonna late evening we're gonna get some shade from one to the other, but that's just the way it the way it happened. So it's right now at 679. The maximum solar that you can put in is 700. And that's, we're, we're late evening, so we're obviously not got the best sun of the day, but we're still obviously uh, about 200 amps higher than we were prior to the tracking happening. So that's a big win. We'll, we'll do some more testing tomorrow when the sun's up. Oh, you guys uh, stay tuned for that video. One other thing we've got going on here, this is a, this is a gate opener. It's got two 12 volt batteries in there. And for now we have a, trickle charger that will trickle charge the batteries overnight. Keep these things fully charged until we get our final system on the wall.